Hi, welcome to this video series on cryptography. Today, I'm going to talk about another fundamental algorithm called extended Euclidean algorithm, which is needed for uh, crypt analysis and cryptographic protocols, a very valuable algorithm. So the algorithm is actually built on top of uh, Euclid's uh, algorithm, which I talked about in the previous segment. So what is the goal of this segment? The goal of the segment is this. Suppose you're given uh, two numbers A and B, okay? You're given two numbers A and B integers, A and B. Um, you, uh, both of them are not zero uh, simultaneously, one can be zero. Uh, your goal is to find uh, two numbers, uh, X and Y, in fact, three numbers actually, and D, which satisfies this interesting property that A times X plus B times Y equal to D, okay? It's kind of a linear, it's a linear equation with two variables uh, to the left and one variable to the right. Okay, what is D? D is nothing but GCD of uh, A and B. GCD is the greatest common divisor that I talked about earlier, so I will not um, uh, talk again. I encourage you to watch that video. Okay, so now um, how do we find these numbers uh, X and Y and D from A and B? We know how to find D from A and B. This is basic Euclidean algorithm. However, uh, we need to also now find A and B. Um, there are many uh, uh, many books that talk about uh, extended Euclidean algorithm in, in great detail, and, and uh, there are a lot of valuable materials online. I'm a little bit confused at times when I see a um, lot of complex uh, while loops and a uh, lot of variables. So I thought I will take a step back and see whether I can come up with some simple recursive notion of extended Euclidean algorithm. Um, I'm not claiming anything new here; it could be present already. Um, so what I'm going to talk about is um, a recursive algorithm to solve this problem okay so let me start with the very basic case what if my b is zero well if my b is zero the answer is easy um my b is zero means i can take my x to be one and then uh, my d to be a then i'm done right uh, since b is zero i can pick whatever value of y i like because b times y will cancel out um, so this this solves the problem any y will satisfy this equation. Okay, so uh, what I am going to do though is uh, consider the case that um, we can rewrite the original problem into sub problems and then use recursion for that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, try something like this. Try something um, using my uh, algorithm here. So what I'm going to do is I will, go, I will rewrite this GCD problem into um, a, a sub problem as follows. Instead of computing GCD of A and B, we will go ahead and compute GCD of um, um, a sub problem, which is GCD of uh, B and R. Okay, what is R? R is, um, what is R? R is nothing but um, A mod B, right? Or the reminder when A is divided by B. This is something true from Euclidean algorithm. We have seen this. Okay, now let's assume magically we found out x1 x1 and y1 which satisfies this property uh, b times or from this let's assume we found out uh, magically uh, two pairs x1 y1 like this okay is equal to d remember gcd of a comma b is same as gcd of b comma r so this must be d then okay suppose we found out this how can we now use this to solve the original problem the original problem is dealing with a and b okay here we have a b that's good but we don't have an a, a here so we need an a somehow so how do we get rid of r um it turned out that we can use another interesting property suppose um we can uh, rewrite our a like this okay a is q times b plus r okay this is true when uh, a is an integer um we can always find another integer uh, q uh, and r which satisfy this property okay what is r r is basically the reminder when a is divided by b um, so R has to be bounded by the value of B. Uh, okay, so we can now re rewrite R as nothing but A minus QB. Okay, so our R is now gone. We can now go back to this equation and simply replace R by A minus QB and then just to rewrite it a little bit, uh, we will get something like uh, Y1 times uh, A plus uh, X1 minus uh, Y1 times Q, okay. Uh, times b is equal to d so we got what we wanted right 
we need a something adjacent to a yes we have for a it's y1 uh, something adjacent to b yes this this part is for b okay so so the solution is simple now the solution is x is equal to y1 right and uh, y is equal to x1 uh, minus y1 times q okay so we do know everything we know how to compute q we know how to compute r therefore we can compute everything but we still haven't figured out how to find x1 and y1 so we let um, the recursion go all the way until the case that um, our reminder becomes zero at, at that point we do know exactly what the answer is as i said earlier when 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 you compute gcd okay you're recursively computing um, smaller and smaller uh, pairs of values and r becomes eventually zero then that time you you stop okay when when you have a situation like this let's take this example again right a comma zero what is gcd of this this is nothing but a okay that means uh, my x has to be one and y can be anything i like whatever value you like so i'll put a question mark and d is nothing but a so so we found out the value of x and y when one of the arguments is zero it's straightforward okay and that will become true when when this recursion is, is triggered right now what is the next step of this recursion the next step of this recursion is gcd of r which is smaller than b and then b percentage r mod r or, or division of b by r so if you continue this at some point this the second argument will become uh, a zero at the time we know the value of uh, x and y and then we use that to build the next level of x and y so that's that's why i said here if you magically solve the sub problem of b and r we get the x1 and y1 and then uh, we just take uh, x to be y1 and y to be x1 minus q1 times q that's basically it so i will now show you uh, a quick implementation of this idea very simple and neat idea okay so what i'm going to show you today is just to show uh, the the algorithm that's going to implement that part okay so here is the recursive algorithm um, i'll zoom in a little bit so the algorithm takes a and b as inputs and computes x and y and d which satisfy this property a times x plus b times y is d okay uh, what is d d is nothing but um, d is nothing but um, gcd of uh, a comma b so as i said earlier it's very simple when b is zero right when b is zero uh, all you're going to do is you treat your x to be one and y to be zero and by the way y can be any value as i said you can change the y it doesn't matter okay and uh, your 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 gcd is of course a when b is zero therefore you solve the sub problem now the high level problem is um if b is not equal to zero uh, you compute the extended extended gcd algorithm for b comma uh, a percentage b once you solve that uh, you find a new x and y exactly like the way i explained on the on the whiteboard you compute the quotient um you use x to be y1 and y to be x1 minus y1 times q and you can even have an assert statement that checks that your algorithm is correct okay so this is basically it and now i can now show you some some implementation uh, some some runs i will start my python uh, from um, my program name is xtcd i will import all of the things and i will just uh, call my recursive version of extended gcd um, because i also wrote a non recursive version but that's a little bit more complicated than the recursive version i will compute say recursive um, extended algorithm for uh, 8 and 12 right what are the things i will be getting i will be getting the gcd and the x and y okay so let me print this now print d x and y okay what is d d is 4 which is correct because gcd of 8 and 12 is 4 uh, what is the x x is minus 1 so let shall we check that shall we check um, x times uh, 8 which is uh, minus 1 and then uh, y times well b times um, uh, y which must be equal to uh, d which is uh, 4 right okay so assertion is true because minus 8 plus 12 is 4 and d is 4 so uh, we can we can convince ourselves by trying something uh, for sure we know d is 1 uh, in this case d 8 and 9 are adjacent numbers so d must be 1 and what about x and y um, x is minus 1 so 8 times minus 1 8 times minus 1 plus 9 times 1 must be equal to 1 yeah that's that's pretty much it 
Okay, so of course uh, we can also print the D. So this algorithm is pretty neat. It show you the the mod inverse part of the demo as well, just to get the idea across. Okay, the mod inverse idea is also pretty neat. Um, all you are doing is calling the extended decreed algorithm, and then uh, uh, computing x mod b, and then you get the answer result. Okay. Um, the reason is simple, right? A times b, a times x plus b times y is one. So ax is one minus by, and ax is equal to one mod b. That's the reason for one minus mod b. Um, okay, th th this comes directly from the definition of a mod these two, right? That means the x must be multiplicative inverse of a. So all you have to do is just call the extended equilibrium algorithm. Here I'm using uh, both the recursive and non-recursive. So in my code, I have this is uh, non-recursive, which you can see. Non-recursive GCD is a bit involved. It requires a couple of more variables. Um, and then um, you need to keep track of the last two state. Um, uh, you, yeah, it's basically the same more or less, but, it, but still a fair amount of more work comparing to, to a recursive version. And, and the recursive version um, is, is very straightforward coming from the structure of how we are uh, sort of uh, solving a larger problem uh, by using a simple pro uh, solving a smaller sub problem and then making use of the result. Uh, like for example, you solve the sub problem b comma a mod b first and find the x1 y1 and then use that to compute your x and y for the larger problem. Okay, so that's basically the the main point I would like to convey to you. Thank you very much.